Hey everybody, Nate here from Tight Lines, and today we're gonna go over kind of what I like to carry and use for musky fishing. First off is the rod and reel. Uh, and again, this is gonna come down to personal preference. There's a lot of different great rods, a lot of different great reels on the market. Here I have a 10 weight Sage One, nine foot 10 weight Sage One. Uh, I like this rod. It's a very lightweight rod that allows me to cast it all day. Um, and on it is a Ross Formula One reel. Now again, the reel, not incredibly important. What is important with the reel is that I like to have a reel that's lightweight because again, you're gonna be casting all day long. Uh, you're gonna have big flies. In some cases, you're gonna have sink tips, sinking lines, things like that. So I like the overall rod and reel to be as light as possible so that I can comfortably cast it all day long. Now we're going to go over a couple of the lines that we like to use and why. Uh, starting here on the left, we've got the Rio Powerfly. I like this line. It's got a nice weight forward taper to it. It'll throw just about any fly. This is a floating line, so everything's going to remain on the surface. So if you do want to get down, you're going to have to have a loop-to-loop -loop sink tip or go to one of the other lines. Here we've got the Scientific Anglers Streamer Express and a 450 grain, really nice fly line for getting down the deer hair type flies, uh, things that are gonna be more buoyant if you wanna get them below the surface. The Streamer Express is a great line for that. And then here we have two versions of the Rio Pike Musky line. Uh, this is a really, really neat line that Rio's come out with. It's got kind of a camouflage drab type color to it. Um, really aggressive weight forward head that'll allow you to throw just about anything. And uh, this one here happens to be a floating version and then they do also make an intermediate version here as well. So just a couple of different options. Again, there's a ton of stuff out there on the market that works. Um, it just kind of comes down to per personal preference and the types of flies and the type of water that you're uh, fishing, you're gonna have to kind of fine tune uh, what you're throwing to those conditions. Moving along, a couple things, and again, I'm not gonna go over everything. These are just things that I feel are necessities to have in the boat. Uh, starting before the fish, uh, some sort of stripping guard or angler gloves such as these from Buff are very, very nice. You're gonna be doing a lot of stripping nonstop all day long. So you wanna protect those fingers, particularly if you're gonna be using any of the textured type lines. But even with a smooth line, you're gonna get some pretty nasty uh, burns. These ones are nice because they also uh, give you some UV protection on the back of your mitts when you're fishing. Um, hook file is, I believe, of the utmost importance. You're going to come into contact with wood, the bottom, stuff like that. You're not going to get a lot of opportunities with muskies, so when you do get that shot, you want to make sure that those hooks are good and sharp. Another thing that I don't let any of my anglers fish without is a good pair of sunglasses. Uh, a lot of these hooks that we're dealing with are you know, anywhere from a one knot up to a six or seven knot. And as you can see, that's a big nasty hook that's gonna be flying around and through the boat. So you wanna make sure that you protect your eyes at all times. Even if it's getting into low light, get yourself a pair of clear or, uh, or yellow lenses to, to protect your eyes. Now moving forward, uh, some things I like to have in the boat at all times uh, in the event of actually hooking or getting a fish on, some of the basic uh, extraction tools. You're going to want to have some sort of jaw spreader in case the fish does take the fly in deep. Pike and muskies are notorious for when you go anywhere near their mouth, they like to just close up, close that mouth. It'd be nice to have an extra arm and an extra set of hands, uh, but sometimes uh, you don't have that opportunity. So having something such as a jaw spreader to get that mouth open. Um, as far as holding on to them, I personally like to use uh, some sort of glove. Uh, I firmly believe that it's not a matter of if you get nicked by one of these fish, it's a matter of when. You might come in contact with the edge of the gill, a gill rake or something up inside of there. So if you do use bare hands, be careful. Otherwise, some sort of fish glove is good. Or a tool such as the boga grip 
or the Lippa. Either one of these are very, very good for keeping your fingers away from those uh, the sharp business end of a pike or muskie. Uh, the Boga does rotate. One thing that I always tell people when using these tools, try to keep the fish in the water. One of the things that, the, that pike and muskies like to do when you grab onto their head with one of these is they like to spin. So keep them in the water. Make sure that fish is taken care of and safe. Uh, if possible, I've got a big landing net that I really, really like to use. Keeps that fish in the water at least until I can get the hooks out of it uh, and deal with it that way. Um, another thing that I believe uh, is, is uh, of the utmost importance that you almost always have to have in the boat. Um, some sort of pliers or multi-tool. I see a lot of guys carrying stuff like these, uh, some sort of Leatherman or Gerber, something like that, and they're great tools. They've got a lot of different uses. The problem with them is that when you're dealing with a big fish and you grab this tool, you don't have a lot here to work with. Now while it's great for pinching barbs, uh, seating knots, stuff like that, uh, it's not so great for getting out a, fly, a fish that's uh, hooked deep with a fly. And that's where investing in some sort of long reach pliers like this uh, I think is, uh, is very, very important. These ones have a little bit of an angle here uh, on them which allows uh, me the opportunity to get inside and kind of grab the back of the hook like that and pull it out. So. Have this stuff out, have it always ready with you when you're fishing. If you're wade fishing, have some sort of hip pack where it's dis at your disposal and you know where it is. When I'm in the boat, I like to have this stuff kind of laid out and ready so that if and when we get a fish into the boat, we can keep that fish in mind and get it back in the water as quickly as possible.